Hi everybody. So I've got a talk track here for you today. This doesn't match the title you just saw. I, I've tried to get ChatGPT to help me come up with the best title for my slides today, my talk track. Uh, where we landed, ChatGPT and I, we landed on from friction to flow, elevating teamwork with Terraform Vault and console. And I wanted to start, and I want to ask a question. I'd like to see a show of hands. And if I see any hands down, I'm going to assume you're lying, you're not paying attention. Have your teams, when you're deploying applications, managing applications, supporting them, securing them, have you ever experienced friction? Yeah, every, every, everybody, like 100% every day, right? And I want to explore why that is, where that friction comes from, and what can we do to overcome it? So before I get into that, I just want to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Marc LeBlanc. I'm a Director of Services and Practice Development at Mobia. It's a small system integrator reseller up in Canada. We focus on telco, healthcare, uh, and enterprise space. I've been a HashiCorp ambassador the past couple of years. Uh, I'm a big advocate for happy developers and engineers. Uh, and my people managing role, I want to work with people that are happy. I spend a lot of time with my teams. And if you're having a good time and feeling good about things, I'm probably feeling good and having a good time as well. Uh, secretly, I wish I was a cowboy. And if you ever make a bet with your spouse or partner, you could be on stage saying some crazy stuff as well. Uh, I do actually own that hat. That's a real hat. My wife wanted me to wear it down here, and I said, there's no way that's happening. Uh, so beyond this kind of intro, uh, I've been in the industry since 1999. It was the time of the era. Everyone was moving into tech, so it seemed like the thing to do. And I've seen some stuff uh, through the years that I've been doing this. Um, the last decade or so, I've been consulting in this kind of space, how companies adopt uh, microservices, how do we do automation, how do we do DevOps. Now it's how do I do Gen AI, uh, should I be doing Gen AI. And the benefit for being on stage today is you get to hear some of the stumbling blocks that I've encountered and some of the things I've heard and some of the things I hear customers saying that are really blocking them. Uh, I have a great story that I don't bring up too much today, but I was part of a team at one point with a large phone manufacturer in Canada back in the heydays, uh, where we were responsible for deploying automation solutions for data centers and network, and we never talked to our customer, which was our app teams. Uh, you can imagine how that might have well went. It didn't. So the agenda for today, for the next half hour or so, we're going to identify the friction and talk a little bit about where that comes from. We want to talk about the personas that are involved, look at a path forward, how can we smooth this out, what are the outcomes if we adopt that kind of a methodology, and I'll provide codes examples throughout involving Terraform, Vault, and Console to give you an idea of how this was configured and built. So let's start. If we think about what we're all, what the purpose that our, our roles are, we're all trying to build some sort of an application. Customers are, or companies are building applications to run workloads to do a thing. To get there, we have these teams, various personas, people doing different functions, devs, platform, security ops, SRE teams. I know there might be a little overlap there. Hopefully you recognize your own teams in that kind of overlay uh, in some way. And what are we trying to do? We're building these applications. We've hired these teams that are doing these functions. Well, whether it's internal or external, the goal, the shared goal is to produce happy customers. Doesn't matter, Any, nothing else matters. If we're not getting happy customers, why are we doing the thing? And so I wanted to talk about a little bit about these personas that I've identified. So the first person I've pulled up here, Jennifer. Jennifer is a developer. She really just wants things out of her way. She wants to write code and ship new features and applications quick. She's really hung up when she's asked about things like, how do you get your data, your metrics into my observability platform? How do I secure your application? Where is it going to run? They are of concern to her, but it's not her core focus. And yet, it's really a bottleneck. So her pain point is frequent context switching really hampers her productivity. And I think everyone's experienced that. You're in the middle of something, and you're asked about something that, yeah, you kind of care about, but it's that thought bubble that just evaporates in the air. So that hampers Jennifer's developer uh, work a lot. Next up, I have Addy, a platform engineer. He's bringing years of experience managing infrastructure and trying to bring DevOps methodologies. He's committed to a robust platform that's got all these features and capabilities that the app teams need. 
The challenge for the platform engineer today, is, as in my opinion, is there's a myriad of tools they're trying to adopt, whether it was legacy, whether it's a new thing, whether it's dynamic, whether it's cloud native, there's all these tools we're trying to manage and make do a thing. Whether we need them or not, that's another story. The other thing that happens with, as part of that conversation, because the platform engineers have to touch all these tools, is they feel like they're constantly firefighting and coordinating conversations between these various teams. Again, that's disrupting focus, stability. Yes, they need to care, but they need a different way to take that work in. Next up, SRE. Yes, I know, SRE, platform engineer, there's a lot of overlap there. Just go with it. <laughs> so the, the essence of our SRE role is they really want to make sure that our systems are reliable, stable, and they want data. They want metrics and KPIs. How do I know if this service is good? Is this application good? So they have a vital need for insights to preemptively tackle those issues. The mission is to shift from reactive. They don't want to be reacting. They want to have proactive inputs. They want to see things before they happen. My last and favorite, Khalid, or security engineer. How many folks like working with security teams? Oh, there's one hand, one, a couple of hands went up, amazing. <laughs> so the problem with the, the security team is this is an ever-evolving space, and I think that one of the biggest challenges security teams have today is just an inundation of data, and how do I action all of that stuff? So anything you can do to make your security team's lives easier is a good thing. The mission for the security team is really to stop security vulnerabilities way up front. When we're talking about shift left, before a developer sits down at a console and writes a single line of code, they want that security posture to be figured out and understood. And so what happens when we talk about what these different personas want and we think about the frustrations that we're introducing into the way we're trying to get them to work today. We're asking developers to become vault aware and write vault aware applications. That's a great goal. It's, a, it's an amazing goal that'd be perfect. But if you're asking someone that is very focused heads down on producing an application written in Node or Golang or whatever, and you're saying, hey, this isn't good enough if it's not vault. Are we really getting the end goal of a happy customer because we had to use a sidecar or an agent? Same thing if we talk about our platform engineer wants to build a strong, robust platform. They're frustrated by multiple team demands. Is there not a better way? Do we have to be managing all of those tools for that engineer, or is there a better way forward on that? SRE, same thing. They're tired of inconsistent data. Uh, we've all seen this, the developers that have a different dashboard for their, their application that they care about, and they want that somehow managed by an SRE team, but the SRE team's kind of going, well, I don't really know what, like, what's, this, what's this data about. I care if the customer has a good experience. An entirely different talk track. Lastly, the, secu the poor security uh, individual. It's just the last minute, and we, again, I think we've all experienced this. The app's in production, let's secure it now. Now is time to put the security in place. And that really drives security teams crazy. So whatever there was a better path, a smoother path, and I picked the platform engineer on purpose, this could have been the SRE's face on purpose as well, just someone that's always trying to think of how do I remove toil and how do I make my job easier and my team's jobs easier. Oh, there it goes. And I want to talk a little bit about building purposeful platforms. And not just doing things because they're cool or that they, it's a new trend, but really thinking when we're picking tools and we're building these platforms that do these things that support our applications and workloads that our teams are interacting with, do it with purpose. And so I've pulled out some of the functions that come from the roles and personas I talked about. We have development, we have the CI CD function to actually get our applications built and pushed out to some sort of an infrastructure. We have the infrastructure layer, security layer, and an observability layer. And we all know the, t the options for tooling are endless. I just pulled out some of the, the main ones that I, I think we all are familiar with. We've got Git, we've got VS Code, Jenkins, Argo, Kubernetes. Uh, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. 
So I'm going to talk about how this team overcame some of the problems that they were facing. So our platform engineer, Addy, he's going to use Terraform to prepare a Kubernetes cluster and get all the plumbing set up for Jennifer's app. He knows that there's a security comp component and that there's going to be a networking component, so he's going to install Vault and Console as well. And being the platform engineer he is, he wants it to be repeatable and a scalable solution, so he's going to manage it all with Terraform. Just a bit of a code snippet of what that looks like. Again, Addy's a great platform engineer. He knows that his code should be modular, so he's written some Terraform modules to set this up. The red box around the console block here, this maps back directly to the Helm chart that HashiCorp puts out for console. And what we've done here is we've enabled both Prometheus and Grafana, so there's a full-blown installation of those observability toolings out of the box as well. That's gonna make Hannah's role in the SRE really nice, because it's gonna be out of the box. Once this was deployed, we actually used the console API gateway. I don't know if anyone's played around with that, it's pretty neat. Uh, we've got two gateways here. We have an app gateway and a vault gateway. And we did this on purpose because we believe you should be treating the ingress for your app differently than vault. It should be secured differently and handled differently. So we rolled out two separate gateways. And those are console API gateways. Next, let's talk about what Khalid and his security role is gonna do. He's going to configure Vault for secure and dynamic credentials. He's going to be thinking about the access model of least privilege. And he's going to be managing the policy as code with Terraform. He's not going to be logging into the console and doing this manually. He's going to write the code and open a pull request. It's going to get uh, actioned. So what does that look like? Uh, just some of the configuration with Vault. Again, I think this should all be done with Terraform. Anything that's configuration like this uh, is a really easy win. So we're setting up the secret paths. There's a secret KV version type one. More interesting than that top block that's setting up the secret path is the vault policy. And this is a really simple read-only policy for that app. So once this gets applied, there's gonna be a policy for that app. It can only read a secret at the path secrets by app. The other thing I wanted to point out uh, with vault, because this is running in Kubernetes, we're using the Kubernetes auth engine in, uh, in Vault, so there's not a lot of moving parts as far as getting that application up and running, authenticating to Vault, and having access based on that policy. And it's all bound to the service account that the app is running as. Okay, so the, what about the developer? So Jennifer's gonna finish writing a new, a new app, new features, and pushes it to production, because that's the way you do it. You just push it right to production. I thought about that after I wrote the slides. I was like, I should have changed some extra steps there, but it's out there in the wild now, so. <laughs> what I want you to take away from this slide, Jennifer's app is consuming some secrets. We see this here. She's reading in an API key from an environment variable called Giphy API, and you can see there's a curl request going out and hitting the Giphy API, doing something. There's no, there's no interaction from Jennifer to hit the Vault's API. There's no Vault command at all. It allowed her to just write the code, write the app, and get the job done. Again, I was asking before, yes, we want to get away from agents and sidecars. We would love for the application to be vault native. But does that really get us to the end goal of a happy customer? Why would you, why would you block that? Let's keep going. So what that looks like from a Kubernetes deployment manifest. Uh, there was a little bit of plumbing that had to be set up here. Uh, in, in the red block, what we see is the annotations required for the vault sidecar. And this is doing all the work that Jennifer didn't want to be bothered with. She got this between the platform engineer and the security engineer. What's the path to my secret and how do I mount it? Um, and this is going to set up a vault agent sidecar on the pod when it runs in Kubernetes. Lastly, our SRE, Hannah. Because we set up Prometheus and Grafana as part of this deployment, there's some really cool things that happen. And I like this integration with console. It's not as deep as you might think when I say the word integration. But what happens is when the application rolls out and it authenticates to console using, again, the Kubernetes uh, auth mechanism, it's getting inject auto-injected with a mutating webhook for some uh, configurations. Notice towards the bottom, there's a Prometheus path and a Prometheus port. 
and enabling the Prometheus scrape. That's actually come from, from the console mutating webhook. So that's really cool that an application can get online, it authenticates, gets its secrets from Vault, gets online to the service mesh, and because we've turned on an integration with console for Grafana and Prometheus, it's getting those configurations as well. Just to take a look at what that looks like. So I just did a quick grab of the services for Grafana. You see that it's exposed with a load balancer. Uh, same thing with Prometheus. We see down there at the bottom the Prometheus servers uh, exposed through a load balancer service as well. Really neat because it was just turning it on in the, the Helm chart. So what do we have? I just want to recap. So we've built a platform. From a development perspective, maybe not a lot, of, lot to see here because they're pretty standard tools. There's GitHub, there's VS Code. Pretty normal. For CICD, in this case, what I've done is I've chosen GitHub Actions because I think it's uh, just a quick Swiss Army knife to get things done. And what's happening with that flow is Jennifer will push her code up to GitHub. There's an action that triggers. And the action is actually configured with the Vault auth role to go and fetch dynamic credentials for Google Cloud to push her new uh, image over to GCP. On the infrastructure side, we settle on Kubernetes, console, and Terraform because we know that that's going to hit a lot of the things we need. Uh, from a security perspective, we're, we're getting a lot of that from Vault. Uh, there is a security component to console as well through identity-based networking. Um, I didn't really delve into that on, on this talk track, but I think it's a, one that's worth mentioning at least. And then observability, we've picked some industry standards with Grafana and Prometheus as well. And so what happened when we rolled this platform out to allow Jennifer to just focus on writing her code? She was able to effortly, effortlessly deploy just because she, pushed, she wrote code and pushed it to GitHub, the rest happened. Our platform engineer, he had narrowed down the breadth of tools he's working with. It was much easier to manage. He's using Terraform to do it all, so it's easy to iterate over and add new features as he needs it. SRE got that data instantly because the application was pre-plumbed with Prometheus configurations and security. He's getting a lot. We didn't even cover a lot of it. Probably the biggest thing he gets out of using Vault is the auditability of that secret access. So what's the app? I, I'm a, I'm almost embarrassed because it's, it's so stupid, but we'll show you this anyway. Uh, uh, my background is infrastructure, DevOps, working in Terraform, Vault, all that. I am not a developer, nor do I call myself a developer. So the features of my app, if you haven't figured out yet, these personas are fictitious based on, and I've done a lot of this role. But anyways, here's the app. So playing on the cowboy thing at the beginning, I purchased a domain called devopscowboy.com. It's, it's true. I was going to set it up, and I was going to do a Rick roll for you all today, but I didn't do that. Uh, so here's the app. It's giphy.devopscowboy.com. And what's going to happen here is it's going to load this page, and all it's doing is, is reaching out to Vault, saying, give me my API key for Giphy, and go fetch a random cowboy Giphy. And so here it should start playing. Counts down. And this is a super stupid, simple Node.js app. And there it is. <laughs> I don't know if it warranted that, but thank you. Uh, so, so to sort of start wrapping up here, uh, the main message is build platforms with purpose. Be mindful of the things we're asking other teams to do. When we're taking on these new initiatives, keep in mind the personas. We all have different areas of concern, and I want to really clarify one thing, because one I wouldn't want the misconception that in any way I'm saying go and make a silo. That's not what I'm saying when I'm saying let the developer develop, let the security person do the security. We still need to be collaborating, we still need to be communicating, but I don't need my app, my app developer to be an expert in Vault, nor do I need my security engineer to be an expert in Terraform or the app. They all bring something collectively to get to the end goal. Think about our tooling synergy. I, I pick these tools because I do think there's a lot of synergy with the HashiCorp stack. I think it works very nicely together. I think when a team sets up managing vault policies through, through code, it's a really magical thing to see that happening very seamlessly. Remember the shared goal. I keep kind of harping on it. The shared goal isn't to build these tools and these platforms. The end goal is to get happy customers. If our customers aren't happy, the rest is for naught. Um, and then I, I think the last point here is really a core 
thing of DevOps for me, there's always room for growth. We don't have to start with the, the first release doesn't have to be the end goal. The first release just has to be the first release. Don't get, don't get blocked by perfection. So think about the story. Think about those personas developing applications, workloads, producing happy customers. And if we really put some focus on this, this is achievable, where we have happy developers, happy engineers, not burnt out, building cool applications and platforms. Customers are happy, win, win, win. That's a perfect scenario for me. And I think that's it. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about Cowboys and DevOps. Uh, if you scan that QR code, you'll get my LinkedIn. Uh, and if you want to see the demo, I do have my laptop here. I'm happy to spin it up and take a look at what was actually built and how that all comes together. There's a lot we just kind of talked at a high level here. But if you want to deep, dig a little deeper, I'm happy to find you out uh, in the hub and, and go over it. Thank you very much. <laughs>